Black Yard Professor Chess videos. Um, I'm going to do several openings now. Right now, let me start out with the Gioco Piano. I think that's how you pronounce it. I used to call it Guaco, <laughs> so I call it the Guacamole opening. <laughs> the Guaco Piano, you know, uh, shows my intellectual prowess is about as good as my pet cat, right? Uh, the Gioco Piano is a very, very old opening. In fact, it's one of the earliest, and it's one of the earliest to be analyzed. Now, what is so interesting, Graham Burgess, in his book, The Mammoth Book of Chess, yeah, The Mammoth Book of Chess, I've got it sitting over here on my table so I can reference it properly like a good scholar of chess, right? He says, man, <clears throat> is that like too direct? It is, isn't it? Burgess says, man, don't play chess by the guaco piano. The Gioco, <laughs> how the hell do you say this word? It's Italian, man. I'm not Italian. The guacamole opening. That's what I'm going to call it. Just get over it. I'll spell it properly for you there under the screen if I remember to put it in when I'm editing this. He says, don't learn this opening because it's boring, it's drab, it's symmetrical, and it will just bore you to death. Uh, and, and, and it's true, really. Uh, you really don't see the Gioco Piano played a whole lot in Grandmaster Play, but and I know a patcher like me is just going to use the old dumb openings. No, that's not true. But look at the psychology here with me for just a second. If it's really not an overly played opening, wouldn't it be smart to understand it and every now and then in a tournament spring it on your opponent and give them a surprise. If you've analyzed several different variations on ideas in the Gioco Piano, it might surprise them. Besides, I've, I've been looking through all my chess books, <clears throat> and I have some phenomenal games of the Gioco Piano to show you from Bobby Fischer, uh, from Alexander Alekin. I, I don't know of a lot of moderns. I've heard Gary Kosproff has played it a little bit. Uh, I haven't found any of his games yet that that I have, people who keep editing the books on him leave out the ones where he played the Gioco Piano, I guess. I don't know. It's really not a popular opening with the Grandmasters, and no, it's not as bad as Graham Burgess said, that it'll just bore you to death. That's not true, because actually the Evans Gambit arises out of the Gioco Piano, and yes, I'm aware that everyone's completely destroyed the Evans Gambit. Yeah, it was hot stuff and big time in Paul Morphy's day, but today it's been refuted. Don't kid yourself. I've got some great games on the Evans Gambit to show you more or less recent, too. Here's the basic idea. Here's the basic idea. And I've got this old, huge mammoth of a tome. You can see it's about 16 and a half feet thick. It, it is an older book. I understand that. And I haven't updated on my openings for a long time. I know John Noon has a huge set, four volumes thousands of pages of opening analysis. This one is by I.A. Horowitz, Chess Openings. Oh, you can't see it. Ch that doesn't help either. Chess Openings Theory and Practice. Good grief. Talk about a flippant amateur video maker. Anyway, I'm going to use Horowitz for right now because that's what I've got. Yes, it's dated. But, but the ideas aren't. Yeah, more or less. So it's a king pawn opening. And then you pull out the knight on the king side. Black will pull out the. Now you notice this is exactly like the Rue of the Pez. Now, according to the chess blue book that I was looking at the other day in the library, uh, the Gioco Piano only has a, uh, like a, a 41. A, a th what, what did he say? 41% chance of winning for white, while through analysis of all the millions of games that's been played with the Rui Lopez, the Rui Lopez has a, like, 48%, so everybody quit playing this to play the Rui Lopez because they wanted a better chance of winning. That might be one possible explanation. The, uh, the symmetry here comes... Now, notice the Rui Lopez is bringing the uh, bishop to b5, right? Pinning the knight keeping this D-pawn in check, possibly, etc. The Gioco Piano puts the bishop at C4 and then C5. 
So you can see the symmetry, right? But, but look at it this way. Look at the positive aspect of it. You do have central pawns. You're fighting for the center square. You've got a good knight support and a good knight attack. Good knight support here, an attack here, and a, a knight here. And same with this one. Um, and, and the bishops cut across diagonals, heading toward the king side in both instances. Uh, so this is, a, this is a symmetrical opening. Now, if you just play it the same old boring way without putting any kind of spice into it, of course it's going to bore you to tears and shame on you because chess should never bore you to tears no matter what opening you're opening on. Right? Now, uh, the Müller variation is to right now push the pawn to c3. I've got several games where they play several more moves before they push this uh, pawn here. And then black will bring out his second knight. And that gives him a pretty solid uh, center there. Now, the idea is to fight for the center, but this opens up the center somewhat. So this, this thrusting the, the central pawn to the pawn to queen four, and then, of course, the pawn takes pawn, and Horowitz has a, a bunch of different analysis on this, and pawn takes the pawn. The advantage uh, as white, you can see here, once you press that queen pawn up, because you've moved the c-pawn, once you press this, the pawn up here, the, uh, the pawns here can be very devastating. You can get really tough in the center on this particular one. And instead, now this is interesting because black has to be aggressive. It's not a matter of, you can, to pull it back there is atrocious. Number one, you're blocking your own queen pawn development and you can't get your bishop out. Don't ever put any of your pieces, if you can help it, in front of your own pawns like that. That is a positively horrible move. Now, from, from here to this position is doable. It's okay, but it's not the strongest. Uh, I mean, if why pull it all the way out and then pull it all the way back once you're threatened? You know you're going to be threatened because you're right here on the C file, which is right next to the central section, and you know the pawns are going to come at you, right? So to push it back here, no. And to pull it all the way back is absolutely forbidden. Just don't ever do that. That is just wrong. Here, uh, you could. It does give you a good diagonal. The, in the Müller, as a general rule, once this pawn is, is thrust forward and you have the exchange of pawns, the bishop will come to here and go check to the white king there. This is the better one. This is probably the best square to put that bishop on at this point. And of course, as white, you have a few options. You can put the bishop up here and block the check. You can bring your knight down here, but that moves the knight twice, see? You can put your queen up here and there's no way in heck anybody's ever going to take your queen. <laughs> Morons, if you do that. Don't tell them I told you to do that. Uh-uh. No way. Uh, the, standard, the standard replies, of course, the knight. It brings out another piece, centralizes the power, and now that the knight has come out, this is where the knight takes the king pawn. And in most of the games I have of the guacamole, the Gioco, this is the pawn that is usually taken. Uh, I haven't seen anywhere the knight takes the queen pawn. I've seen him always attacking the king pawn, for what it's worth. And then at this point, the castle. Well, that's as far as this... That's as far as this opening of the Gioco Piano that Horowitz shows takes it. So that's basically your opening board, the idea, the philosophy. Looking at it this way, now, what the castling does is it unpins the knight. With, 
with this, you can begin to get an imbalance real easy if black chooses to take the knight, right? You take that knight, and then, of course, white virtually has to respond. Now you're in this type of a position, and you have the imbalance with the single bishop, with, with the uh, double bishop and the single knight, and black has given up the bishop pair. He has the single bishop and the dual knights. Uh, you do have the bad bishop here with the pawns. However, man, he can come out to here or here, depending on what kind of a shenanigans you want to invent out there to, to play the game. But that's basically the Gioco Piano. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of quick games out of Irving Chernev's Chess Traps. I agree with the overall teaching that you shouldn't really play for traps. Um, if you're playing someone and they really do make an obviously inferior move, once you understand several of the different types of openings and you see their obvious blunder move, then you can play for trap. But rather than playing for traps, the ideal way to play a good game of chess is to just play solid chess using the basic strategies, keeping your tactics sharp, and play it that way. But let me show you a couple of ideas on how very interesting and exciting this cut and pick an opening can actually be. Hang on, I'll be right back. Don't go away. All right, this is out of Irving Chernev's, it's a fun little book, Winning Chess Traps. It's, it's kind of a cool book. There are several grandmasters who have fallen for several of these types of traps, and he examines all kinds of traps and booby traps in all kinds of openings. Uh, Pandolfini wrote another book, Traps, Zaps, and whatever, that deal with this kind of stuff. So we've got the uh, guacamole here. And I know I'm probably going to take it in the teeth by those purists who think I'm making fun of the opening, and I'm not. I'm making fun of my lack of being able to pronounce that opening. Gioco, I believe, is Gioco or Gioco. I don't know Italian. Probably I should have probably just looked it up. That way I'd embarrass myself, save myself from being embarrassed. So we've got the typical Mueller variation that I just showed you in this particular trap, right? And here comes that queen pawn. And he's definitely going to challenge the pawn. And then the pawn takes the queen pawn, absolutely. And the pawn returns it in kind, absolutely. And the bishop does come down here and go check bishop knight 5. And the knight to bishop 3 does come up here. So this is just exactly the opening that I just showed you, the, the Mueller variation. And now the knight takes the king pawn. It's very interesting. Oh, one reason, perhaps, is because he's picking on this knight. The knight is... Uh, pinned, so to bring a second, he's going to win that knight, is what he's doing. He, it, it gives black a chance to get into this territory a little bit better, right? But, white turns the tables on him. With this particular trap, Here's now he undoes the pin by castling, and castling is a good thing. He'll be able to come up here and get that open file if that king doesn't hurry up and uh, hurry up and castle. And the bishop takes the knight. Gosh, this board's wobbly tonight, isn't it? Now, this is one of the interesting things. Rather than responding by retaking the bishop, look what white does. White presses to chase this pawn. Pawn, queen, five. And, of course, the knight moves out of the way. Ta-da! And now the pawn takes the bishop. And the knight takes the bishop. So you can see white has given up his bishop pair. And so has black. It's all a... Queen comes straight up, queen, queen, four. Now that's a nice tactic, isn't it? <laughs> kind of tricky. One or the other of those boys get a hit the dirt. Now the... The knight here at bishop 5 drops back to queen 3. Oh, and darn, she doesn't get a take. And I'll bet she's weeping like crazy. However, watch what she does get a take. She comes up here and takes the queen knight pawn. And queen comes up here to bishop 3. So it looks like she's going to try to apparently entrap the queen. And of course it's not going to happen. Actually, the easiest way in this particular trap is to simply take the queen. 
and the knight returns fire and takes the queen. So this is pretty pretty good. It's starting to thin down pretty good. You got an open file right there, man. I'm telling you. I'm t oh, yes! True to form. Now the rook takes command of the open file and says check to the king. You always want to do that, man. I'm telling you. Well, the king goes to here to the queen one. And then the bishop comes way up here to the bishop knight five, pinning this bishop. Ooh, look at this vicious fork possibility here. This is not looking good. The knight comes down here to king one. Notice how in tandem these knights are working together. That's really kind of cool to see, isn't it? Knight drops back to king one. Now for the bombshell. The rook takes the knight. Bam! Ouch! Check! Well, it's not game over because now the king can just simply take the rook, of course. But now you got this other rook that comes over here to king one and says, check, and repossesses the file, which is really kind of cool. This time, the king dodges over to this because, of course, he does not want to get into that kind of a bishop fork. Now watch! <laughs> this is kind of cool. Bishop comes to rook six instead of taking the knight and goes check. So now you're forcing the king to the only square he can go. King knight one. And now rook comes up to king five. And white makes the next move. You can see that the bishop has blocked off. There's virtually nothing he can do to stop the knight. Can't can't move any of that, can't move any of that. This does virtually nothing. This does virtually nothing because the rook's going to go right to here and go checkmate. So that's kind of a cool little trap, I should say, out of Irving Chernev's. Oh, there's another really cool one that shows black winning the Gioco piano. Hang on, I'll be right back. All right, let me give you another quick little game in this video. I'm going to try to do two games per video on these uh, Gioco Piano for about six or seven videos so that you can get a feel for the Gioco Piano. You never know. If you throw this in a tournament or in your chess club and nobody's been studying this very much, you could pull off some upsets. Uh, the Grandmasters do this all the time. That's what makes it kind of fun. So it's fun to know different options. The more you know in chess, the better you're going to be. So here's your typical Gioco Piano opening. And now White, in this instance, castles immediately. White is a man named Rosentreader. Black is Hofer. He castles, and now he brings up his second knight. Black usually does do this particular maneuver. Uh, gets both knights out, because it's very important in the Gioco to fight for the center here, and you can do that really good with two knights. That is just the way it goes. Now, what's this? The bishop takes that pawn. Now, you can see black is really beginning to get a strong center here, and he's starting to radiate his influence out. So that's a very interesting move. See, you can see already, this isn't a boring, symmetrical game at all. It's, it's pretty dynamic. You've got to watch your P's and Q's. Now, White removes the bishop, and now see the value of having both of Black's knights out. Now look how Black's beginning to dominate the center, and look at what might be coming up. Black has the option here of taking this pawn here also. Uh, that's going to give Black a dominating center, which is usually a winning position. You can really do powerful from that, and that's not something White wants. So logically, it makes beautiful sense to bring this bishop up to g5, to pin this knight to the queen. You don't want this knight to have free, free maneuvering here. That's not good. And, and black recognizes that. White can clearly see black wants that pawn, so he's going to chase this bishop out of here. Well, the bishop wants to keep that knight pinned. <laughs> ah, that's fun, isn't it? And now g5. You can see black is saying, no, I want that knight to be able to take that pawn. But this is a mistake. Watch what happens because of this. He's pushing too hard too far. Now he brings up f4. And interestingly, rather than taking the bishop, the pawn takes f4. 
Now look at this. This is really getting tense, isn't it? But watch how white dissipates this. Very interesting. White does a rook sacrifice. White takes the f4. Wow, we have really got an interesting game here. Now, pawn, of course, is going to take the rook. You can see it kind of scattering out here, huh? What white was trying to do with that rook sacrifice, I think, is take away the initiative that black was beginning to build up, right? And now, the pawn took it, <clears throat> now the queen takes the knight. Ouch. Now, isn't this interesting? Look at the reversal. All of a sudden, now the center's full of red, whites pieces instead of blacks in just a few short moves. Now it appears to us that white is dominating the game. It's very interesting how this works. So black hurries up in castles. And now the bishop takes f6. Very interesting. Putting the question to the queen. The bishop's covered. Queen has to move to e8. And now can you see what uh, what's going on here? Bishop comes to h8, and black resigns. <laughs> the game is over. There's nothing black can do to prevent the queen from coming to here, uh, no matter what No matter what happens. I mean, you can try to do a desperado move and do this, and he can virtually ignore it and go to checkmate. So that's another quick illustration to show you that there's plenty of dynamism in this opening if you play it right. If you understand, there's plenty to, <clears throat> there's plenty of ways to sacrifice, and I've got some beautiful games to show you that. So, anyway, here is the Gioco Piano for the next, oh, four or five videos. I'll try to present two games per video. There's a couple of long ones that are really instructive end games that I want to get in here, so that I'll probably just do one video on them each. But, welcome to the Gioco Piano, and thanks for watching my chess videos. Have a great time studying chess, and... I will see you in the next video.